Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you uh, for inviting me to give uh, this uh, presentation to uh, uh, our sub IT fellow. And I'm asked to give a presentation about the uh, plot world. So I just uh, returned from a foreign trip, so a little bit uh, uh, dizzy. And I hope I still can convey the message. So the uh, presentation title is about the role and growing demand of a plot world. Uh, this is uh, one of the uh, uh, major research effort uh, going on within Cali too. So I'd like to share with you what's happening in uh, this uh, research topic and and uh, what are the opportunity for uh, the researchers, students, and faculty to work on and to contribute to the solution of this uh, growing demand of the plug world and how we can have a very energy efficient uh, 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 society in using a variety of uh, plug world devices. So what is a plug world? So usually when you think about the plug world is uh, the white goods. So when we think about the white goods uh, in old days at home, we have uh, dishwashers, washing, ma uh, washing machine, and uh, refrigerator, and so on. Uh, those are old days, the white goods. They all plug into the outlets. Uh, and use uh, electricity, and um, but over the uh, last uh, thirty years, California has uh, adopted a very restrict rule in terms of energy efficiency for the white goods. So even though we have uh, the population growth and the number of family also increase, but in terms of overall energy usage in white good plug load devices, actually is a sort of a set rate. It did not grow proportional to the family number increase. Right, so that's a good sign because we adopt very strict rule in adopting the policy in white goods. But what happened is they are emerging electronic plug load devices. Right, so what are the electronic uh, plug load devices? So to answer that question, we need to uh, take a look what are the DNAs uh, in uh, electronics? Right, so what we have seen here is uh, in the last half centuries, they are well established and continuous reinventing in the electronic industries right, in the last half, half centuries. And what happened is uh, if you look inside your PC, for example, we have seen this uh, electronic system level integration on a chip. Right? So nowadays, you see is, uh, uh, they are multifunctional uh, chip device. It can perform communication, can perform the uh, uh, the microprocessing functions, and also the analog to digital conversion and so on. Right. So there are variety of functions integrated onto a single chip. Right. So it's not not like a big bulky device in old days. And as a result of this uh, integration efforts going on in the industry, we end up with having a cheaper, faster, better, smaller, and new functionality on the devices. What does that mean to us? Right, so this is uh, what happens. Is it has revolutionized the consumer electronics, <coughs> computer, uh, control, and communication industries. So this is in old days. Right? So when we think about electronics, we had a bulky device. Right? So you have a different chipset, and with a big vacuum tube, and you have uh, behind the, uh, uh, inside the uh, TVs, and we put them together. But nowadays, in, in, uh, on your cell phones, you could have uh, color TVs, right? And that's done by one single chip. Cost you only two bucks to get that chip produced. And similarly, uh, in uh, 60s, this is uh, the IBM mainframe uh, 360s, right? So it's, uh, at that time, it cost you probably a few million dollars, and in order to connect all the wires, even people will move the wire. Right? And nowadays, in your, in your laptop, uh, the uh, microprocessor is more powerful, almost 1,000 times powerful than the old mainframe computers. But how much it costs you to produce that? A few dollars. Right? A few dollars. That is the reality. Similar thing for your wireless your cell phones, right? So in old days, we used all the vacuum tube, right? So if you have seen uh, in the 80s, walkie-talkie is a, such a monster, and now it's a, a tiny iPhone. Right? And inside, you have a single chip. That is uh, the DNA in the electronics. 
place. Then what is really behind those uh, uh, electronics? And it's so-called microelectronics. And this is a microelectronics is the DNA in the plug rolls. So what we have seen here is uh, in the last 50 years, the industry has uh, followed so-called the Moore's law. Right? Moore's law, Golden Moore was uh, the CEO of Intel. In the 60s, he made the predictions. He said the density of the memory chip in your computer will double every 12 months. And later on, we revised this rule to every 18 months. Every 18 months, you will see the density double uh, in, your, uh, in your memory chip. And also, uh, for your microprocessor, it's good. The, uh, the number of transistors inside the processor will also double. Uh, that is so-called the Moore's law. And how it happens, because we are able to continue, reduce, continue reducing the size of the transistor inside the chip. Right? So back in the 60s, the transistor size is about 5 to 10 micrometers. That's the dimension of the transistors. Mm -hmm. In this generation, 2010, or even beyond, what we have is that the size of the transistor is already reached in production 25 nanometers. Right? From 10 micrometer to 25 nanometer, you are talking about 500 times reduction in the transistor size. And the number of the transistor Integrate back then in the 60s is about one transistor per chip. Why is it that this is the size of the, of the chip? In this generation, for the same size, you have a 4 billion transistors. 4 billion transistors integrated onto a single chip. Imagine, with so many transistors, a lot of functionality can be accomplished if you know how to use those transistors in an effective way. Right, so, uh, so we are continuing this uh, drive in making transistors smaller to integrate more functions. Also, we notice here is yes, in order to make the entire chip work, because the transistor size is getting smaller and smaller. So what happened is it, you still use the same voltage to drive your transistors. What happens? Right, the voltage divided by the dimension is the electric field. Then electric field becomes too high because you're, you're reducing the size by 500 times. If you still use the 10 volts, then the electric field will be too high, the transistor will not work. So over the years, we have seen this, uh, the uh, voltage, power supply voltage used to drive those uh, chips. It decreased from 10 volts or 15 volts in old days all the way to this generation is less than one volt. One A battery can drive your chip inside your PC, but A battery, that's what the laptop, right? So, so this is a very significant because having very low voltage, what does that mean to the power consumption of your chip? What is the power consumption? So if, very simple question, intuitively you ask yourself, what is the power con consumption? It's proportional to voltage square, right? The power is a V squared, right? So when you have voltage <coughs> decrease from 15 volt all the way to one volt, and the power consumption drop about more than 225 times, right? it's V squared. Right? So this is how we are able to integrate so many transistors, so many functionality onto a single chip while not burning the chip. Otherwise, the power consumption could be 200 watt per chip for a tiny area, it's like a light bulb. Right? The chip probably will melt when you run your microprocessor inside a PC. And how we accomplish that goal is by having lower and lower supply voltage. That's good for us in terms of uh, energy efficiencies. Okay. So that is uh, the DNA uh, in the plug though. Inside, we have uh, uh, this uh, microelectronics. Then, so what can that do for us? Look at uh, those uh, microprocessors, it provides the intelligence. So this is uh, the summary to show you uh, in terms of the computing power, how many MIPS, right? So this is a million instruction per seconds um, from the 1900s all the way to uh, 2020s. You can see it's, uh, the processing power continue increase, right? So it's 
So we used to use a MIP, now it's a MIP is it's already obsolete. That's it. And they are using as a uh, not a million instructions, a billion instructions per second. And as I just mentioned to you, because of uh, this uh, power supply voltage decrease, allow us to continue to reduce the power consumption per MIP. Right, so to achieve the same intelligence, but the power consumption is lower and lower, just like human brain. Right, so if we need to perform so many instruction mid, right, uh, the many instruction per seconds, if our brain is not efficient, half of your brain will be very hard. Right, every time when we think about something, we're performing some computing function, then you will see your brain is going to grow. Right, but in reality, it's, uh, our brain actually is uh, every instruction. It's less than nanowatts, even in the picowatt range. Right? Otherwise, it's our brain, will, our head will be so hot every time when we talk. Right? So this is a, a, what is happening in the industry. We recognize we are able to integrate more functionality onto a single chip, and itself provide us with a new intelligence available to us. Okay, then we. All the uh, functionality integrated onto a single chip. What does that mean to us? Is and we have seen as uh, over the uh, last uh, uh, hundred years how the uh, uh, the mass use of the electronic inventions. Showing here is how many years would take for any invention to reach uh, about quarter pop U.S. populations. Right. So look at the telephone. Would took us would take us about. Uh, uh, of almost 50 years to reach quarter million of population using the telephone. And the web took us about uh, eight years. Twitter, how many years? Which a quarter million, a quarter of the US population. Less than a year? No, less than three years, three years. And that is it. All we see here is, the message here is, because of the introduction of the web, and we see this adoption of uh, using new gadgets is going to increase exponentially. Right? That is uh, the, uh, the new area we are seeing. Right? So the Facebook and the Twitter, those are just examples. And what we will see here is, as a result of uh, massive use of uh, those uh, uh, devices, we have seen is uh, even in 2004, we already reached uh, trillions. That means it's already reached 10 to the 18 bit per seconds. Okay, it's uh, per year, sorry. 18 by per, per year. 10 to the 18, 10 to the 18 bytes per year. Right, so that's the data traffic. And that number is uh, actually, this was a report in 2004, but now that number probably is already reached somewhere here. Uh, more than 10 quadrillions. Right, so the message here is, as a result of pervasive use of uh, microelectronics and electronic devices, the data traffic increased so drastically. And think about when we have a data transmit and receive, will that consume energy? Is that free? Oh. It will consume energy. Every bit, if it consumes about nanowatts, you can calculate how many wattage use to transmit this data. <coughs> okay, so to summarize what we just talked about uh, in this uh, uh, microelectronic electronics. So following the Moore's law, we see the increasing penetration of the residential consumer electronics particle devices. So this is in the 70s, what you probably, most of you were not born, right? So, and even in the 80s or 90s, only a few devices at home. And nowadays, on the average in the US household, we have more than 25 to 40 devices in use. Right? So I think it's a probably your personal experience. When you come to UCI, if you live in the dormitory, did, did you bring with you all the electronic gadgets? I don't know how many you have now. Probably you have probably five to 10. Think about it. So Everyone has their own personal plug of devices. That become the so-called the person's uh, the uh, energy footprint. Because all the devices that you're using, your laptop, your iPhone, your uh, stereo systems, and iPad, and so on. Right? So that all contribute 
to just uh, plug your devices. That become part of your energy footprint. How much energy you use a day. And you just don't recognize it. But we are using so many devices a day. As a result, this is what happens. About a few years ago, when US made uh, assessments about the uh, energy usage for the plug load devices, the number we came up with is uh, about less than 15% of the total energy usage. Actually, it's about 10%, 8, uh, 8 to 9% of the total energy usage in the US is attributed to uh, the plug load devices. But according to the projection, based on what we just analyzed, in the future, by 2030, the energy usage by the plug load devices will contribute to about 25 to 35 percent in the total U.S. energy usage. And what is the reason? Because the number of devices increased. In 2009, in U.S., at home alone, we have more than 4 billion devices used. Each device, even though it has very low energy consumption, as I mentioned to you, because the power supply voltage dropped, each one, assuming it just consumed less than 10 watts, 4 billion, that's a big number. Right? So easily you have so many wattage used by those uh, consumer electronic plug load devices. So this become a, one of the major issues. So far, there's no good way to handle that, how we reduce the overall energy consumption from the plug load devices. And here is just a, to summarize uh, the, uh, the report by uh, Department of Energy based on what we just discussed. If you look at the plug load devices, the, uh, this is uh, the uh, <coughs> trillion watt hours. Right? The way we calculate the energy is uh, wattage times hour the time. Right? That is the energy consumption. And you look at the projections. In most of the area related to the lighting, it's coming down. The reason why, in the past, the lighting contributed about 25% of the total energy usage in the United States. And why it will come down, even though the population grows and more light will be used, the reason for that is uh, we are converting most of the, uh, uh, the light bulb towards LED light bulb. By LED, it consumes much lower energy because it's a solid state device. It requires only five volts to drive such a device. And same as uh, most of uh, other devices uh, in terms of water he uh, heating and so on, but the one sector will continue to grow is uh, the plug load devices, as shown here. The plug load is like the TV, set-up box, PC, and the peripheral devices. So this is the growth of a household, and the plug load device is uh, much higher than the growth of a household, as I just mentioned, because the number increased so drastically. And this is, is, is true for the plug load devices that used in the, uh, uh, the uh, commercial sectors, same as uh, the, uh, uh, the, the previous uh, residential case. So this is growth of the floor space. Right there, on the average, so plug load device is significantly higher than the growth of the floor space because everyone will use more and more devices because the technology is really available and has so many new functions you would like to see and you would like to use it. Right? So that is what happens here. So uh, based on uh, this analysis, what we see here is uh, one question now we ask ourselves is, uh, ideally we know how to come up with uh, the microelectronic devices which consume uh, less energy because we are able to scale down the power supply voltage. And we can also include that intelligence into the plug load devices. Intelligence, what does that mean? If we know we are not using the device, we can turn it off. Uh, if we know we are going to use it, it can be on. It's, uh, on demand, because intelligence can give you that uh, functionality. But one of, one of the area we have to notice here is so-called the AC to DC conversion. What is AC to DC? AC is a typical uh, 
uh, voltage source used at home is so-called alternate currents, right, AC currents. And most of the uh, electronic devices we use in your PC, in your uh, iPhone, or your, in your uh, uh, stereo system and so on, they are driven by so-called direct current source, DC. So in order to use those direct current source, we have to convert the AC current source from your outlets to the DC. And usually when you perform the AC to DC conversions, the efficiency is about 90%. So there is a loss. Right? It's about 10% loss. And, and most of the devices we use in the electronics uh, devices, and there is a typical function, so-called sleep conditions. I say when you turn off your TV, and actually you put the TV into a sleep mode, then when you use your remote control, you wake up. So what happened there is, there is still continued AC to DC conversion to, in order to keep the TV be alert, but there is a signal, it will wake up again, although it's off. So you will have a continuous energy consumption, even during the sleep conditions. So even, that is the one thing I want to live with you. Is a, that is a new feature we will discuss a little bit later on. So um, in addition to what we talk about individual devices about the, uh, in using the plug roll, so far one thing we have not really done a good job is one example, at home you have uh, entertainment systems. Right, so you have your TV, you have uh, your game player Xbox, and you have a stereo systems, and you have uh, other devices, DVD player, and so on, connect to your entertainment systems. Usually what happens, uh, my personal experience is, when I turn it off, my TV, I assume other devices also turn off. Because sometimes we forgot. And what happens, other devices is not off. They all consume the energy while the TV is off. Right, so, we have not really focused on the interaction among variety of popular devices. Can we come up with a sort of a network solution? When you turn off the TV, and TV is smart enough to sense other devices that should not be in use, and can send a signal to turn them off. Right? As a way to, to help us to manage the energy usage. Right? But so far, that's not done. So here, just an example is, we so far we have uh, we don't have enough plug roll devices uh, study and and let alone manage and made compliant and the operation and interaction of many plug roll devices in one place office home store have not been studied even less. Right, that is a, so far when you look at the research landscape, this is what we observe and require additional uh, work. Right, so. To come back to this AC to DC uh, uh, conversions, this is uh, known as uh, the vampire <coughs> mode. Right, so in typical, we talk about energy consumption as an active load <coughs> is in use. And there is a certain amount of energy uh, consumption, say for example, TV. Right, if you use uh, the large screen TV, it's a plasma screen uh, TV, 500 watts. And if you use a LED bed lighting TV, now, nowadays it drops to uh, 100 watts. But those are the active usage of the device, and that is the power consumption. But what happens is when the devices are in sleep conditions, you still need to power up the sensors, and that is done by the AC to DC conversion to power up the sensors. And that contributes to so-called vampire low consumptions, even though it's sleep, because it's, you need to convert the AC to DC in order to keep it one watt usage, and through that process, always there is a certain loss in that conversions. And even for one watt a, uh, usage at the sleep mode conditions, you have uh, so many devices at 24 sevens. Right? You, can, you can calculate the number, 24 hours, seven days a week, and nine billion power devices. So how much power we consume, even if we are not in using it. 
Right? So that is the problem we are facing. We have both active low condition and the vampire low conditions. Right? So not only that, another area we see is uh, there is a growing demand of the plug of devices due to the emerging markets. Right? And here is an example is in the United States, we just, uh, uh, the Supreme Court uh, uh, basically approved the President Obama's uh, uh, the health care reform. And under that uh, health care reform, we will see is uh, more towards uh, so-called managed care. What does that mean? We will see fewer people staying in the hospital. More of them will stay home. But in order to guarantee the same quality of care, we have to find a solution. And the solution is the so-called the uh, medical home solutions. How we have uh, some of the devices invented and deployed at home so that we can continue to monitor the patient's health conditions right, while they are at home. Right, so if there is a need, physician can look at the data remotely and to have interventions right, to render the care. So that is in the future. And you can see now there will be more devices made available to the patient and used at home. They will also plug into the outlets, become part of the problem. And that's why we see that pie, piece of pie, is going to grow in the future because more and more devices will be used uh, for different purposes. And another area we see the growing demand is uh, you heard about the electrical vehicles. Right? So instead of using uh, the, uh, the traditional gasoline, and uh, we're moving towards uh, uh, using electrical vehicle. Each electrical vehicle, the battery consume about 15 to 25 kilowatt hour. That's the energy usage. Allow you to drive about 80 miles, right? For 15 to 25 kilowatt hour, about uh, 80 miles. So every day probably you need to charge your electrical vehicle. 15 to 25 kilowatt hour is equivalent to one household energy usage per day. So basically when you add one electrical vehicle, just like adding one house, to the, whole, to, to the overall energy footprint. And that is uh, the, uh, the plug of devices. It's also plugging into the outlets. Right? So those are the growing demands. So that's why we see that the, the pie chart, that piece of pie is going to be bigger and bigger. And how do we handle that? It's a, those have become uh, the research topic. We, we try to find a solution there. Okay. So based on what we just discussed, in UCI, we uh, recently we saw this uh, California plug load research centers focus on the energy efficiency for plug load devices. So in our centers, some of you students are working uh, in this uh, plug load uh, uh, research centers. We will take a holistic approach in dealing with uh, the plug load energy efficiency. What do we mean by holistic approach? So we will work on engineering solutions. How do we come up with a more energy efficient uh, design for the devices? And another area is uh, the behavior research. The behavior research is uh, following senses. Most of the time, we know uh, we have to uh, consume less energy. Right, to have a green uh, world. But at the same time, we have to change our behavior. Right? How? For example, uh, most of us, even though, even though we know uh, the devices consume energy, if we don't use it, we can unplug it. But sometimes we're just uh, too busy, we forget. Right? And on the other cases, uh, most of the time, we even don't know we consume more energy than we we, we thought we, we, we did. And for examples, uh, we had uh, one uh, research work done by Professor David Kirkby. Uh, did a study of uh, the uh, consumer behavior at the uh, uh, University Hill. Most of uh, uh, faculty live there. 
And the study was uh, to use uh, different uh, devices to allow uh, uh, allow the researcher to as assist the faculty to assess the use energy usage pattern at home and provide the feedback information so that uh, the faculty can take the action to actively manage the energy usage at home. Right, so the question is, uh, what is the information feedback will be more accessible and understandable to the users? Right, so, and the idea there was is, what kind of information feedback? Do you like to have alarm to tell you, say, hey, you are using more energy every 10 seconds? That may not be uh, acceptable to most of us. Uh, you don't like to hear the noise. And sometimes uh, most of us don't know energy usage because you cannot touch it. Uh, electricity, just somewhere you know the lights on, but uh, if the lights off, you, you thought you are not using energy, but in reality, there's a vampire energy consumptions, and we don't know. So how do you provide those information feedbacks? And most striking thing is when we did an interview uh, with a lot of students and the faculty, and the units we are using for uh, the energy consumption is a kilowatt hour. A kilowatt hour, that's the energy units. And how many of you know what that means, kilowatt hour? One? <laughs> Anyone else know kilowatt hour? Yes? So uh, I was told uh, most of uh, faculty ask our researcher, what do you mean by kil kilowatt hour? They say it's a kilowatt. Why this hour at the end? So one kilowatt hour is equivalent to 860 calorie. And that 860 calorie is a double cheese hamburger. Uh, that's a one kilowatt hour is a one one unit. We pay 25 cents. Right? So that's how we how the uh, Edison charge us right, for energy usage. But that is equal to one double cheese hamburger. Right, so the informa information feedback we provide to the users to show how many hamburgers they have eaten at home every day. Now suddenly everyone got a message. Right, so it's a, what kind of information need to be fed to the user and so that they will change their behavior. That is also a research topic. And and most of the time when we are working on this kind of energy efficiency, we have to come from two ends. One is a top-down, is the uh, agency like uh, California Energy uh, Commissions. They are the ones setting up the standards and the policy and the code for consumer or for the utility or for the vendor to follow. If they don't follow that, they can not sell the goods in California. Right. And on the other hand, utility, utility like Edison and others, they work with the California Public Utility Commissions. They come up with a so-called incentive program rebates. When you visit the Best Buy, right, they are rebate. The rebate program is also designed by them to encourage consumer to adopt more energy efficient products. Now, the problem here is, think about if I offer you $25 rebate, for purchasing an energy efficient TV, which costs you about $2,000. Versus another one is $1,000, not efficient TV, which one would you buy? $25 rebate may not be good incentive for you to make a decision. Say, oh, $25, but the difference in price is about $1,000. On the other hand, if we offer the rebate to Best Buy, any TV you set, you sell uh, uh, to the customer is energy efficient. We give you twenty-five dollars, and think about for them, what is their profit margin? Probably a hundred dollars. Twenty-five. That's twenty-five percent profit margins. They will be more. In, they have a good incentive to sell more energy efficient product. So how do we design a program working with a different agency to come up with solutions? So we have to understand, right? The users and also the vendors their relationship. So that is a part of the 
uh, the program we are working on. And lastly is education. Right? So the more we tell uh, the user about the energy efficiency issues, the more uh, um, action they will take to be energy, uh, uh, to, to be uh, more conservative in using the, the appliances and so on. Right? So that is uh, uh, the effort uh, going on. So uh, in the Park uh centers, I know we have uh, a uh, program right now working on is a one kilowatt hour challenge project. So uh, we have designed uh, the demo. It's, uh, we have a variety of uh, consumer electronic devices set up inside the lab and allow students to come in to experience. If you can only live with one kilowatt hour a day, what devices can you use? And how long can you last? Right, so. Do you know how much energy consumed when you use a hair dryer? Take a guess. Hair dryer, right? So every morning you dry your hair. Take a guess. How, how many, how, what is the wattage for the hair dryer? Come on, you guys, take a risk. Take a guess. One more five to do. Huh? Thousand watts. Actually, it's one kilowatt to two kilowatts. Uh, most of our students, when they walk in, they assume that is about is ten to hundred watts. Right, so, because of that that is the power of the education. You have to really that student go through that process, right, and educate them by having uh, them exposed in that, into that environment and playing a game. They will learn a lot through that process. So uh, now I have uh, mentioned to you a lot of issues related to energy efficiency in the plug devices, but I don't want to say this is the devil. Okay, plug devices is not the devil. There are good things also we can, we can do with uh, the plug devices. And so what we see here is that the plug device, although it consumes the electricity, but also for overall energy saving by offering alternative solutions. Right, so here are some of the examples uh, using telepresence and video conference. Right, right now, think about if we have a conference, we need to travel to offsite, and that will consume gasoline energy, right, and cause pollution. But what if we have a video conferencing, we don't need to travel offsite, and that can save substantial energy. Even though that part of the device consumes energy, but overall, it saves more energy, right? So here are just uh, some of the example. Currently, uh, this is uh, just an example. Uh, we have uh, set up those uh, video conferencing uh, between uh, sides, right? So even though uh, two auditorium will join uh, between San Diego and Irvine, so you can see is uh, about uh, 400 people participating in this uh, conference uh, without traveling. Uh, think about it. Uh, 100 people to travel, how many cars you need to use, right? So the overall energy consumption. But now, with this kind of gadgets, even though they are part of devices, use energy, but at the end, it consumes less. Right, so this is uh, the, uh, uh, one of the uh, projects uh, in the hyperworld, work with uh, the uh, NASA's. Right, so it's uh, to have uh, ultra high resolutions, uh, uh, display of the information. So you can see it's, uh, we already reach uh, uh, levels. Uh, it's like uh, people working in the uh, virtual reality with someone in the real world and they are interacting, uh, sharing all the information. Right? So this is, uh, we are pushing the envelope in such a way it will uh, enable us to interact with the people in the remote side without uh, needing a travels, at the same time they have uh, the real life face to face experience. So that's why we are uh, promoting pushing here. And the other area is related to the healthcare. Uh, so we do have a lot of activity going on related to uh, telemedicine, telemedicine, as uh, remote medicines. So in this case, what we have is a variety of uh, devices that can be developed at the home. Uh, so for example, this is the device. It's uh, at the center of your home, your TV. We can convert this uh, TV with additional webcam. Now this become a video conferencing uh, uh, setup for the 
patient to talk to the physicians, to talk to the physician. And also, uh, this can be, the same devices uh, can be connected to the, uh, the iPhone or your laptop, so now you can talk to uh, your physician anywhere, anytime, right? so without really traveling to the phys physician's office. All right, so same as here, this is uh, one of the uh, sub-IT uh, fellow two years ago and developed this, this technology uh, with, uh, uh, with our researchers. So what he did is uh, to develop the new uh, Android platform, connect to the TV with a variety of medical devices so the information can be downloaded to your Android. Right? So in order for a doctor to, uh, to do a diagnosis of the patient's conditions, they need to measure your blood pressures, uh, your heart rate, and, uh, and uh, use a stethoscope right, to listen to the, uh, uh, the breath and the uh, otoscope to see uh, the inner ear and so on. So a variety of medical devices can be connected to, uh, to this uh, uh, television and to do the telemedicine. Right? So, and that is uh, the following uh, work to develop uh, uh, these solutions. So, uh, so in conclusion, there is a challenging elect electricity consumption due to the growing demand of uh, electronic power. Right? So that is always a challenge to us. And the solution requires constant efforts, engineering behavior, education, organization, as I just mentioned to you. And if used properly, electronic plug well can save energy. And we have this center is taking a holistic approach in efficient work and open the door to various partnerships. So we are currently working uh, with uh, uh, many uh, faculty within UCI and also uh, working with uh, uh, the utility and California Energy Commission and the companies. So uh, we are recruiting uh, many companies to join our centers. So we have, uh, uh, right now we have uh, two companies jo just joining in. Uh, one is a DirecTV. And the second one is uh, the Toshiba. They also joined the center. So uh, we already talked to uh, ut utilities. Uh, they were joining, and the CEC provided initial funding for uh, this work. Okay, so so uh, I have to thank you for your attention to this talk. Any questions, please raise your questions. So I will try my best to answer the questions. Thank you.